Hi everyone, happy Molecule Monday. Today I'm starting a Mythbuster edition of Molecule Monday on my channel. So periodically on Mondays, I will take a claim made by the media or that you see on the internet about potentially harmful ingredients in cosmetics, and I will see what scientific articles have to say about that, and I will give you my opinion based on these articles. So today I'm going to be talking about parabens. So as you've shopped for cosmetics, I'm sure you've seen many products that say paraben-free. It's everywhere. You see it on multiple products now. There are claims that parabens are hazardous to the health, but what exactly are parabens? So parabens are preservatives. They've been used since the 1920s in cosmetics to preserve products to prevent the growth of bacteria, prevent the growth of mold in your cosmetics products so that these products can have a longer shelf life. So interestingly, parabens are actually derived from parahydroxybenzoic acid, which is actually a compound found in fruits and vegetables such as blueberries, strawberries, grapes, and carrots. So it's derived from this compound from fruits and vegetables. So it is converted from the naturally occurring carboxylic acid to an ester, which is far more stable. So what caused all the uproar about parabens? Well, there are two main studies that were discussed in the media that I believe caused all of this controversy and upset over parabens, and I'm going to go over these studies and break them down for you and kind of interpret the results for you. So the first article was published in 1998, and this article showed that parabens are weakly estrogenic in rats. So this means that they bind to estrogen receptors and thus act as female sex hormones. So excessive exposure to estrogens has been linked to breast cancer and also, and also reproductive disorders. So the media kind of took this article that shows that they are weakly estrogenic and kind of extrapolated that and said that it is causing breast cancer. Well, this study actually showed that parabens are very, very weak estrogen binders. So in this study, they measured estrogenic activity, which means the ability of a substance to bind to estrogen receptors. They measured that ability for different parabens. And so they actually used two different types of studies. They used in vitro studies and in vivo studies. In vitro basically means that they carried out these studies on a petri dish, and in vivo means in life, and they actually used rats to examine this. So let me just give you the results of the in vitro studies first. Again, this is on a petri dish. So they were looking at the ability of different parabens to bind to estrogen receptors compared to estradiol, which is a natural estrogen. So compared to the natural estrogen estradiol, Methylparaben was 2,500,000 times weaker than the natural estrogen at binding to the receptors. Ethylparaben was 150,000 times weaker, and butylparaben was 10,000 times weaker than estradiol. P-hydroxybenzoic acid, which again is the natural compound found in fruits and vegetables that is used to make parabens, was, no activity was observed at all. So in the in vivo studies, which were in the rats, methylparaben was found to have no activity for estrogen binding, and butylparaben was 100,000 times weaker than estradiol at binding to estrogen receptors. There are a couple of reasons why this study is not even relevant to cosmetics at all. Number one, the in vivo studies, the studies in rats, the samples were injected underneath the rat's skin, not topically, but underneath. So I never see any cosmetics that you put underneath your skin. So number one, so that's one reason that this is not relevant. Another reason that this study is not really relevant is that phytoestrogens, which are in foods that we eat, such as soybeans contain the largest amount, but they're also found in oats, carrots, flax seeds, etc. These are only 2,000 times weaker than estradiol at binding to estrogen receptors, whereas the parabens, as I just discussed, the one with the highest binding was 10,000 times weaker than estradiol. So foods that we eat pretty much every day have five times, have more than five times as much um, estrogenic activity as these parabens in, measured in this study. But again, these were measured underneath the skin, not topically applied to the skin. So the third reason that this is not 
relevant is that these are nowhere near the amounts that we're exposed to in cosmetics on a daily basis. So there's so there's a really cool website. I'm going to link it below. It's called personalcaretruth.com. And one of the writers on this blog broke down this study as far as the numbers and to how relevant this is for daily use of cosmetics. Basically what they found through their calculations is that a consumer would have to use 10 times the average amount of cosmetics products with parabens on a daily basis in order for these results to even come close to being relevant. So in this study at the lowest dose that showed potential health problems, you would have to use 10 times the average amount to get to that point. And also, again, in this study, it was underneath the skin instead of topically on the skin. So it would also have to be absorbed through the skin. And that is also highly unlikely based on other studies. Again, in this study, it was underneath the skin and it wasn't topically applied. So, so in my opinion, for these reasons that I've just gone over, I don't think this study is very relevant. But again, it's something that caused a lot of concern. The second study I want to talk about is one from 2004. And I think this is the one that really caused the uproar in the media and really caused the scare. And it really kind of caused the change that we now see. Where we see all these products that say paraben free. So in this study, they found parabens in 20 different human breast tumors. And so this study really blew up, was on the media and really caused a lot of concern. However, when you look into this study, there are many flaws in this study. The number one flaw in this study is that there was no control. They only looked at breast cancer tumors. They didn't compare it to healthy tissue to see if they observed any parabens in the healthy tissue. They only looked at the breast cancer tumors. So, they really can't, so really no claims can be made from this data because if they had observed the same amount of parabens in the healthy tissue, then the results would have definitely been insignificant. But they didn't even have the control there to compare it to. Also, another major flaw in this is that parabens were actually me measured in the blank samples. So I guess this is what they considered their control in the study was no tissue at all. And they actually found parabens in these blank samples. And actually, when you look closely at this data, there's no statistical difference between the parabens found in the breast cancer tissue versus the parabens in the blank samples. So actually the highest blank was actually higher than 12 of the 20 tissue samples. And the second highest blank was higher than nine of the tissue samples. So you can't help but wonder, you know, is there a possibility that none of the parabens measured actually came from the breast tumors? It's just, for this reason, it's just not a relevant study. They had no controls. They had no healthy tissue control to compare it to. The blanks showed parabens. And if you look at the data with statistics, there's no statistic different. There's no statistical difference between the tissues and the blank samples. I know I'm getting really heated here, but it's just that this one study was taken and just blown out of context, blown out of proportion all across the media. It's, it's not the audience's fault, you know, because you hear this information and it's very concerning, very upsetting. You think that, you know, using products that contain parabens could cause breast cancer, for example. So I just wanted to go over these studies that really seem to cause the uproar and kind of explain to you why in my opinion and in other scientists opinion they're really not relevant to cosmetics and this is in no way meant to make anyone feel stupid or make you feel bad if like you don't use parabens and even if even after even if after you watch this video if you decide not, that you don't want to use parabens i completely respect that I just wanted to explain these studies that caused such an uproar and kind of break it down for you. So this is something that has me pretty frustrated and upset because parabens are actually known and by the experts that work in the cosmetic industry, they are some of the best, actually the best preservatives for cosmetics. But there's such a fear surrounding them now from studies that weren't even relevant and 
and studies that were blown out of proportion, taken out of context. And so you might be asking, so why don't we just play it safe and just avoid parabens in general? What about alternative preservatives? The parabens actually seem to be the most well tolerated and actually the most well studied. Um, I can make another video kind of going through. I only went through the two studies here that cause so much concern but if you want me to go make a part two to this video kind of going over more studies um and explaining that in further detail i can definitely do that it's been the most well studied um also seems to cause the least problems and irritation in the skin you can have you can definitely have an allergy to parabens so um definitely if you have an allergy to parabens definitely avoid them it is pretty rare though although it is rare it still can be a possibility so if you've been patch tested and it has has been confirmed that you're allergic to parabens then absolutely avoid them but it is actually a very small percentage of the population that is allergic um, and actually natural preservatives, a lot of people are like, well, what about natural preservatives? Well, usually these have to be used at a much higher concentration and in order for them to be effective. And many times that actually results in skin irritation. So again, one of the things that's so attractive about parabens is that you have to use such a small amount um, compared to, for example, natural preservatives. You actually have to use a very large amount and that oftentimes is very irritating. So for example, essential oils acting as preservatives, one, they're not as effective as parabens as preservatives, and two, you have to use it as at such a high concentration that it's often very irritating and causes a lot of uh, skin irritation. So, and alternative synthetic preservatives, for example, are also problematic and they seem to be more irritating. I'm going to give you some uh, statistics here um, from patch tests in the U.S. So, patch tests in the U.S. indicated an allergy incidence for parabens of 0.5 to 1.7%. However, for alternative preservatives such as formaldehyde, it was 9%. And for diazolidinyl urea, it was 2.7 to 3.7% incident of allergy indicated by the patch test. So, so parabens seem to be more well tolerated than alternative synthetic preservatives. And here are some organizations that have stated that parabens are unlikely linked to cancer. So the European the and I'll have I'll have these linked below for you the European Commission Scientific Committee on Consumer Safety Cosmetic Ingredient Review National Cancer Institute US Food and Drug Administration Cancer Council Australia Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and Health Canada all of these organizations have stated that the current use of parabens is unlikely to be linked to cancer so if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I just want to give you one more statistic, one more kind of number to leave you with here. And then um, and I'll have this linked below if you want more information. But on that same blog that I mentioned earlier, which I'll have linked below, um, they broke down the, per the percentage and parts per million of parabens that the average consumer is exposed to per day versus the number at which we start to see problems in studies. So at seven parts per million, that is when some health issues start to be observed in the scientific studies of uh, for butyl paraben. And through a series of calculations, which again you can find on personalcaretruth.com, they found that using generous numbers, so kind of using like the highest amount of makeup that you would probably apply containing butylparaben, they found that it ends up being 0 0.02 parts per million. And the number at which it starts being a health issue in the studies is seven parts per million. So this is 350 times less the amount present for when the studies start to show issues. If you like percentages better than parts per million, that would be 0.000002%. So that is on average how much of the butyl par how much butyl paraben you would be using, and that would be if you that is on the higher end of things. So yeah, that is kind of the last number I wanted to leave you with. I hope that this was helpful in explaining some of these studies. In my personal opinion, I think parabens are excellent preservatives, and I don't 
feel that there is sufficient data to indicate that it is a health hazard, especially at the concentrations that are used in our cosmetics. So I also just want to say again that I completely respect anyone that still decides not to use parabens. That is completely your decision. Just please be aware of the expiration date. If you use products that don't contain preservatives or if you use products that contain natural preservatives, you know, it, it does have the potential to be irritating to the skin and also it's not going to have as long of a shelf life and back, putting bacteria on your skin can definitely lead to health issues so just please be aware of that but again this is not any way this was not any way intended to make anyone feel stupid or to make anyone feel bad for not using parabens that's completely your decision and I always believe that Doing things like one of the most important aspects of your health is keeping your anxiety and stress under control. So, if you feel that using parabens is going to cause you a lot of stress and anxiety, then you know I understand your decision. I that's why I wanted to list to you the organizations that say that they are unlikely linked to cancer and explain to you that these studies in the media were taken way out of context and the other preservatives really aren't very well studied. Um, I will just um, give you one last bit of information. So if you're still set on avoiding parabens because you are worried about, you know, unknown effects on the health from, okay, I want to give you this information from the European Commission who haven't actually banned parabens. There's a lot of internet rumors that they've banned parabens, but they actually have not. They've limited the sum of propyl paraben and butyl paraben in products to 0.9 to 0.19% and they have banned their use and leave on products designed for the diaper area in children under 3. They've also banned the use of isopropyl, isobutyl, pentyl, phenyl, and benzyl parabens altogether, not due to evidence of harm but actually due to a lack of data and they limit 0.4% of methyl paraben and ethyl paraben and a total of 0.8% total parabens in products since 2000. If you're still worried about parabens because you feel like there's not enough data, I would pro um, to give you a uh, peace of mind, I would probably go by the European Commission, which they seem, so based on research, they believe that methylparaben and ethylparaben have very low risk factors, but they feel that the other parabens uh, don't have enough studies to say 100% sure and that's why they have limited the sum of propyl paraben and butyl paraben. So I would say if this still causes you anxiety, I would definitely, you know, go by the European Commission's advice of, you know, methyl paraben and ethyl paraben seem to be safe by studies and you and but they want to limit butyl paraben and polypropyl paraben due to lack of evidence so that would be my advice if even after watching this video you still feel concerned which again I understand because the media did play this up so much and make it seem so scary and um, yeah that's why I just want to say that uh, this is not in any way meant to make anyone feel inferior or stupid or anything like that. I just want to present to you um, from a scientist's perspective and also other scientists' perspective. Other scientists feel the same way about these studies uh, that I've talked about. And so yeah I just thought that this would be helpful. So yeah I really hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to make a part two to this where I go into more detail about other studies. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. But as far as I'm concerned, cosmetic ingredient myth busted. <laughs> Okay, but as far as I'm concerned, cosmetic ingredient myth busted. <laughs> oh god, maybe next time, okay.